Our nuclear revenge. Try to sexually harass my grandma. You might take back a nub tried to post to a different sub and was told to post it here. Recently learned about the revenge subreddits and have been enjoying some of the stories. As I've pondered things, I figured I'd share a few tales myself. This first tale though involves my grandmother. So let me start this by saying yeah I'm on mobile and English is my first language so please be harsh if you see any errors. Also a short TLDR at the bottom. Setting early 60s, medium sized midwestern city, local neighborhood bar. The title of this story comes from my grandma's old saying. See, my grandma always carries a switchblade in her purse for protection and she said if anyone ever tried to attack her, they might get her but she's gonna take a piece of them, hence her term I'll take back a nub. Some context about my grandma before we get into story time. My grandma was born in the deep south back in the 30s. She was one of four sisters who I will refer to for the rest of this as the four sisters. My family decided to migrate up to a northern midwest city in the 50s. Just for clarification my family is African American, so if you know anything about United States history, you would understand why they would want to escape the deep south during this time period. My grandma was 20 something when she moved north with her husband, my grandfather. The rest of her family, her sisters, mother, and uncle, also moved up north. Because of housing discrimination, my grandparents were forced to live in the black neighborhood. The rest of the family also lived in this neighborhood and were basically within walking distance of each other. The thing to know about the four sisters that they were all spitfires. They are some of the most caring women you can know and were all excellent mothers and grandmothers but they were not to be trifled or messed with. If you crossed one of the, that might be your ass. This was especially true of my grandmother, who was all of 5 feet 1 and fairly petite. The four sisters were quite the characters and it didn't take the neighborhood long to know of these four sisters because of their crazy antics. They also loved hanging together on the weekends either at one of their houses or sometimes at the local watering hole. On this particular night, my grandma wanted to go out for a few hours with her sisters. Only one could go, Aunt C. My uncle, my grandma's oldest son, was in charge of watching his siblings for a few hours on this lovely Saturday night as my grandma dressed to the nines and headed down about half a mile to the local bar to meet up with her sister. This was a pretty small bar that got a lot of regulars. My grandma had been there dozens of times and has plenty of stories to tell about her time there with her sisters and also with my grandfather. My grandma and Aunt C are lounging in the bar having a couple of drinks and cracking some jokes with some of the regulars when a new character is introduced to the scene. This guy's name is Leroy. He was a regular as well. To picture this guy I want you to think about a guy as skinny as Jimmy Walker and about the height of Kevin Hart. Combine this and make him about the age of 40 and you'll have Leroy. Almost everyone will know Kevin Hart but if you're not sure who Jimmy Walker is look up the sitcom Good Times and you'll figure out who he is. Leroy was a regular at the bar too but then again, Leroy was a regular at almost every bar in town. You see kids, before the internet, online dating apps and hookup sites, the way most people met was at bars. Our good friend Leroy was notorious for wanting to have one night rendezvous with the ladies at the bar. Well everyone knew his game and after he has had a few one night stands with some of the ladies in the neighborhood, most now avoided him like the plague. This of course didn't stop him from going to bars on a weekend trying as best to shoot his shot and hoping a lovely filly might come home with him for the night. Leroy had flirted with my grandma and aunt on previous occasions and even though he was told that they were both happily married he keep trying to have conversation with them. As soon as he entered, he once again strolled over there trying see if he could get some action with either of them. My grandma quickly told him not to waste his breath but he sat down anyway. What surprised my grandma was that behind Leroy was another dude. He was well over 6 feet tall and handsome. My grandma honestly couldn't recall this guy's name so we'll call him Jerk. My grandma knew right away that this Billy D. Williams wannabe was gonna try to sweet talk and charm his way into some lady's pants that night. It seems that he had his sights set on his first target, which would be of course, my grandmother and my aunt C. It seems like our good friend Leroy was gonna try to be Jerk's wingman. He started off with some small talk to my grandma couldn't tell her how gorgeous she was and something about you know getting lost with heater eyes and all the other nonsense. 
My grandma said that he had diarrhea of the mouth and pretty much let what he said go on one ear and find the nearest exit. My grandma quickly shut this clown down and let him know she wasn't interested, so then he set his sights on my aunt. Now you know my aunt can take care of myself my grandma was always a little protective of her. Jerk made a comment by how nice my aunt's thighs were as he looked lustfully at her. My grandma quickly told this fool that my aunt was married and not interested in his nonsense. This is where the story changes and revenge comes into place. I'm gonna try to write this dialogue as best as she recalls it. Grandma she's not interested and she is happy married. Jerk she can speak for herself. Jerk your legs must be tired because you've been running through my mind all night. Yes this fool used a pickup line. Grandma are you hard of hearing or something or a little slow? I told you she's married and not interested. Jerk bitch. You talk too much. Maybe I'll put what's my pants down your throat. He actually said his D. But not sure if I can use that word. Ladies and gentlemen. This is where shit got real. Yes everybody else in the bar knew you wouldn't and shouldn't talk to my grandma that way. She didn't play for that nonsense. This is one of those times where you could actually hear a pin drop as everyone got quiet. My grandma exploded with her expected what the fuck did you just say? My grandma was seething with anger but jerk face played off as it wasn't a good idea. My aunt C knew it was about to go down. She grabbed my grandma and starting leading to the door. You see my sister knew what many other people knew and that is my grandma kept a 38 snub nose revolver in her purse and typically kept a very sharp switchblade wrapped up in hers bra. My aunt tried to let my grandma out of the bar to avoid any more confrontation but my grandma wasn't having it. As she was being pushed out the door by my aunt and another male customers, my grandma seized a nearby beer glass and flung it towards jerk. Fortunately glass didn't hit him and erupted close to his feet but it certainly got his attention. This well over 6 feet, well over 200 old man jumped out of his chair storms towards my grandma saying that he will kick her ass. My grandma replies bringing on bringing on. She eventually gets fully outside and he decides to come outside. He's a little apprehensive because a couple of the neighborhood bar dudes had gotten up to see this and he's afraid they might get involved, you know, since it's unacceptable for a man to hit a woman and all that jazz. The guy said they're not gonna do anything and just want to watch. My grandma quickly pulled out the switchblade that she had in her bra, unwrapped it from the paper and looked him in the eyes and said come on both earth. You would think at this point any civilized person might be apologizing further for the crude language he used earlier or you would think that the guy, seeing that my grandma had heels on, might just walk away knowing she's probably not gonna chase after them. Do you think this clown chose either option? If you said he chose neither option, you would be correct, let's give you a prize son. What a woman with a switchblade bearing down on him he decides to stand his ground and doubles down by again calling my grandmother a bitch and telling her he's going to beat her ass. He next starts putting up his fist ready it's ready to go to town. No worries, no one says my grandma has to fight fair fight fair. You see, what this clown forgot about was my aunt. While jerk has his fists up ready start striking like he is Mike Tyson. My aunt has conveniently took off one of her high heel shoes. She uses the heel to bash him right in the shoulder blades. Of course this staggers our young jerk. As he turns looking at my aunt screaming obscenities, it gave my grandma time to come and slice this fool right in the side. As our young jerk howls in pain, my grandma says to him maybe I will should slice something else off. The jerk staggered sideways looking at Tealy's two infuriated women one with her high heels still in her hand and the other with a switchblade switchblade with the sight of his blood on it. Don't worry he wasn't too badly hurt as she sliced him but didn't stab him. By this time a few other people are stepping in and are trying to calm the situation down and jerk left the scene. The aftermath. My grandmother heard from others that the jerk went to the hospital and got treatment for getting sliced on the side. This was the 60s so no cops were called and if they had been called, they probably would pf been really slow getting to the scene. No idea what he told the hospital staff and doctors but regardless regardless heard he got patched up and was no worse to wear. Rumor has it that he ended up moving to Chicago a few months later. He never tried to get revenge on my grandma after this so there's there's that. My grandma says she wasn't gonna tell my grandfather about what happened, 
He was a over the road trucker and was out of town when this event happened, but you know how things quickly go through the grapevine. He of course scolded her for this but she just gave him a wicked smile and said that the arsehole deserved it and that he came at her so it was self defense anyway. Not sure that's exactly entirely true but that's what she's sticking with. My grandma continued going to that bar every once in a while and was a bit of an legend. Our friend Leroy ended up being the epitome of a deadbeat dad. Rumor has it that he has something like 10 kids with 8 or 9 different women. My grandma still has the switchblade and yeah she showed it to me. It's somewhere in her massive collection of items now, otherwise I'd attach a picture of it. I also learned that my grandma is a woman of her word because she actually took back a nub in the form of a ounce of flesh from the sus hole. Hopefully you enjoyed this story about my grandma. She has told me the story a few times and was a little fuzzy on couple details, as she's in her 90s now, but I'll do my best to answer any questions. TLDR grandma goes to the bar with her sister to be sexually harassed by this asshole who can't take no for an answer. The moron uses obscenities and calls my grandma derogatory names so she and my aunt get paid back on the full outside the bar by slicing him with a knife. Thanks for watching. Please press the like button if you enjoyed and the notification bell next to the subscribe button to never miss another video. Let me know your thoughts below. Bye.